Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Leopoldo, um, spelled Leopoldo in English. Uh, he's Yankee Victor 6 Echo November Bravo from Venezuela. And he has this question, which is uh, asked by a good number of people who are dealing with this sort of thing. What is the recommended counterpoise length for an NFED half-wave antenna as well as a random wire arrangement? That's a short question. The answer is not so short. In summary, the answer is it depends. Okay, it depends on the individual antenna setup, whether you can get away with no counterpoise, a short one, a longer one, uh, connecting that counterpoise to ground or whatever are several ways you deal with it. Um, so let's take a look at that on the whiteboard and see what we're talking about. Before we do so, I'd like to pay special thank you to Dennis Monty. Uh, Dennis is one of my newest patrons on patreon.com. You too can support this channel by becoming a patron. Go to Patreon dot com slash ke zero og and pick a method that works for you okay so let's take a look at this okay he has an nfed half wave antenna let's start out by drawing a bigger picture of the ballon it's actually an anon you've got ground coming in here is the shield on the uh, coax and it comes straight through to the other side Meanwhile, there is a coil arrangement, and this goes to the center conductor of the coax, and then this continues around on up and out as the uh, high impedance input to either an infed half wave or uh, a random wire. Okay, now there's often a capacitor, very small capacitor in here. Um, we won't worry about that one right now, but it's there. Now, this is the connection he's talking about. Notice it's the same as the connection over here. And this is where you hang a counterpoise, usually a piece of wire. This piece of wire can be zero say 10, 20 feet long. He's working in meters, so let's say zero, uh, three, um, six, nine meters, okay? Uh, now, note that this part of the coax comes down and the shield should be grounded at your ground rod Drawing a ground rod wrong. You have a lightning arrestor, okay, and then your ground rod here, and then this goes into the shack. This is extremely important, okay? This is grounded. The shield is grounded, well grounded. So the counterpoise current can come down here and the outside of the coax will act as the counterpoise and go into the uh, into ground, okay? Now, counterpoise is actually a reactive something, usually capacitance, uh, in a wire to give this thing something to work against. Off times just this connection to ground is good enough as a counterpoise. If not, you can attach a piece of wire here, okay? And this piece of wire, and you'll have to experiment with the length. You can do that by winding it up and unwinding it and so on, and just let it hang free. Um, or you can actually ground it, different ways of doing it. I found when I used a my antennas and fed half wave that this kind of a counterpoise worked beautifully for me okay so again there's an 
there's a, something right there. It can go to a short or a long piece of wire. It can come to ground or it can be um, nothing at all, okay, in there. So what I'm trying to say is that there is no unique length that I can predict will work in your situation. You have to determine the best. Start with none, where you're using just your grounded over here, your ground rod through a lightning arrestor. If nothing else, put in a barrel connector and connect the silver part of the barrel to the ground rod. That won't give you a lightning protection, but it will keep the RF from going further into the shack, okay? So I hope I gave you a few ideas on what to do with that counterpoise on your NFED half wave or uh, your NFED random wire. Now, the technical definition of random wire is more than two or three wavelengths long. So it's a pretty long piece of wire. But with modern tuners, you can put the tuner right at the end of the long wire and use just about any section of wire. If it's short, the penalty you pay is in bandwidth, meaning you're constantly retuning. If it's long, what you the penalty you are paying is the the directionality pattern of the wave is quite directional. Okay, so um, there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you can do so by going to decastler.com slash support and looking for a way that works for you. I'm particularly highlighting the tip jar that's there. If you want to make a one-time good deal payment, you can use the tip jar mechanism. It works through PayPal. You do not have to be a PayPal member to use it. Uh, PayPal is simply a payment processor. And I use it because uh, it works very well for small uh, businesses like mine. And I hope you're going to have a wonderful and a happy new year. I know we're already well into the new year, but um, I'm actually recording this at the end of 2022. So I just want to say Happy New Year to everyone. And until we next meet, 73.